Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Nistro here, and today we are back with uh, post Rage of the Abyss Goblin Bikers. It has been a good while since I've made a proper IRL deck profile about this deck, but I've picked up everything that I that I think that I've needed, and if I don't have it now, then it's coming in the mail. So I'm gonna have all the cards I need for this format, and so I wanted to do something a little more IRL for the deck profile, just because since I have the cards, I've, it just feels nicer to hold the cards in my hand. I know things cost money, so I, I, I don't always do them in, in person, but I figured it would just be nicer to have the cards in person so that when I go to events, I have everything I need. I don't have to like look out for stuff, anything. So you, what what you're looking at is Goblin Biker Fiendsmith. I made a video a few uh, last month, I believe. Uh, going over some of the lines for this deck to play around certain like board breakers and hand traps and now post rota I can tell you that this deck is really good at playing around hand traps playing around board breakers Not so much playing around hand traps. This deck is really good about so uh, we're gonna get into the uh, combo lines and stuff I have been going to a few events. I went to a regionals last month. I went to locals this past weekend I'm gonna go to another regionals at the end of this month as well so there's going to be a lot more goblin content coming out i'm going to take this deck as far as i can i think this is the format for this deck even before riseal comes out and the deck becomes better because it does really well into riseal as we see in the ocg uh, goblin bikers actually have become a tiered deck in ocg it's like c tier right which is like tier two ish but that's still like good enough to be talked about simply due to the fact that it has a good matchup against any deck that's that leaves an exceed monster on the field like if you leave exceed materials on the field against this deck we do really well going second against exceed decks non-exceed decks it really depends on what we open but with exceed decks our engine is just going to do so much going into the deck profile this is going to be a something of a mess of a deck because it's going to be 50 cards or 49 or 50 i i, I haven't had like the 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 total count yet because i made this deck irl based off the theory I used when playing online. But um, it's going to be around 49 or 50 cards, starting with the uh, Goblin Engine. You're gonna have three Doug. I'm on double Gone Wild, one Mean Merciless, one Clatter, one Boom Mock, double Grand Entrance, and triple Breakout. I just wanna say that like Gone Wild adds so much to the deck. Like it's so crazy how good this, this card is and how much it just makes the deck work i feel like i was not really bricking like at all throughout all the play testing that i've done uh throughout my uh past few events throughout all my rounds gone wild just does so well i think as like a starter and just for the deck i think grand breakout is like the reason why we can play through so many hand traps now if they imperm you grand breakout's the solution if they nib you preemptively grand breakout's the solution as long as you don't start with Gone Wild, Grand Breakout is like a great card to um, help you keep going through hand traps. This could turn a nib token into engine. This could turn um, a, pretty much anything into engine. And so it's, it's really great. And I love playing Doug Charger at three now. I would play three Grand Entrance uh, if, if I was being honest, but I forgot I left my third one in my binder. So I was only playing two or I, I forgot to like add the third one in. But yeah, I, I don't think it would hurt to play three, but I do love playing three Doug Charger now because you're going to make rank threes more consistently now. And so having Doug Charger as that extender so that if they burn that hand trap on big Gabonga, then you already have the Doug Charger in hand to keep going. They could do whatever they want to big Gabonga, but it's not going to matter because you have Doug Charger in hand. So that's why Doug Charger is great because now not only is he a one card starter for searching you the breakout, but he's also a great extender way better than he was before and yeah uh since you know the the engine is a lot more complete now uh these guys put in more work i have seen some people uh say like maybe putting in like a second clatter splitter wouldn't be a bad idea and i can agree with that i think clatter splitter does pretty well as uh extender and as a way to continue playing but as you're going to see once you guys see my extra deck it's like we really don't even need to make that many rank threes anymore like now we could really start to explore link plays because the engine just gives you so so many more extra monsters than you're going to need a lot of the time but you're just you're just going to start link summoning on top of your normal exceed full armor exceed plays there there are even times where it's like i i'm gonna have mean merciless in graveyard and i'm just gonna use it for a link summon i'm gonna bring it back and i'm gonna use it for a link summon and i'm not gonna care that they, that it gets banished because the link plays are just so strong that you really don't need the follow-up <laughs> a lot of the time most of the times like i really don't lose when i go first it's really rare that I go first and I lose playing this deck and there's and mean merciless 
is part of that. Like using it for it for a link summon and then like letting it get banished is sometimes a whole lot better than the alternative. Like sometimes it's good not to have to worry about like, oh man, what about my follow up? It's like the Fiendsmith engine has so much follow up in it. You really don't need the Goblin Biker follow up as much anymore. Triple Tour Guide, Triple Terra Top, Takatomborg, Wielder, Tracker, and then three Etelli. I've seen a lot of people want to go with three Gone Wild instead of three Tour Guide and then just use like Tour Guide as like a, I don't know, as a supplement to the Gone Wild when I think it should be the other way around, right? So you have a quick play spell card that turns any monster into Goblin Biker Gone Wild. So why would you want to max out on this card when you can max out on a card that basically does the same thing, but also doesn't conflict with Terra Top? Because Gone Wild would conflict with Terra Top. Gone Wild conflicts like a, if you want to start your engine before going for Gone Wild, you have to control only Goblin Monsters for you to be able to normal summon him without tributing. Meaning that Tour Guide is technically still better than Gone Wild for starting your turn. Tour Guide is still the best normal summon in this deck. So I like that. That does not change, even though Gone Wild is, is a great card. Gone Wild w requires you to use some extra resources to make him good. Whereas like Tour Guide is just good by itself. Terra Top is still like one of the best starter plays for, for this deck. And now it's even gotten to the point where I don't even have to make Gossip Shadow as often anymore. Like if I draw Terra Top plus Tour Guide, there are times where I where I even have to ask myself, it's like, is it even worth making it the, the Gossip Shadow? Because I'm not as worried about Droll because Breakout makes playing around Droll a lot easier. I'm not as worried about Nibiru because Breakout <laughs> makes playing around Nibiru a lot easier. Um, there's a lot of times with like Terra Top where I'm just like, maybe I just go straight into the big Gabonga from Terra Top. And oftentimes that can work because then you could like make a full board without even using your normal summon. So if you have Tour Guide plus, uh, plus Terra Top, sometimes it's better just not even to go for the Gossip Shadow. So that was like the one conflict before, but now it's not even a big deal. And as you can see, we're still on the triple E telly. Uh, sorry, it's a, it's a bit messy. I, I don't have a lot of space <laughs> to work with, but yeah, we're still on we're still on the triple e telly and we're only on one tracker and one wielder just because we want the extenders and these guys are hard once per turns so i figured like e telly we do have more targets than these two um we do play ghost ogre so it, if you have both of these in hand and you draw e telly you do still have ghost ogre that you can summon off of this and ghost ogre actually is really good into this format into uh quite a few matchups it, it's not a bad card to draw not a bad card to summon off the of e telly and same thing with these. Like, if you don't see them, just summon them off of Itali, because I'd rather summon these early than summon out my Ghost Ogre early, compared to just not having another target for Itali at all. I did figure that Nian Nian would be the best target to resolve Breakout, because unlike with, like, the Punk stuff, like some of the other stuff, before, like, if you had, like, a, like, let's say Nian Nian under uh, Exceed Monster, and you summoned, like, Doug Charger, Nian Nian would not be able to trigger, because it being sent to the graveyard and the monster being summoned is like simultaneous so it happens at the same time whereas with grand breakout nian nian is sent to the graveyard before the monster is summoned meaning that nian nian will be able to trigger and bring itself back meaning that nian nian plus grand breakout is like a really good start to your turn it's a good level three to play but i did not want to introduce more bricks into my deck than i already had because we do have quite a few and we're on over 40 cards like, if you play the Fiendsmith engine in, in Modern Goblin Biker, it's hard to keep the deck under 45 cards. So, um, we're going to be playing a lot of cards that kind of, like, supplement each other. And I and I don't want to introduce extra bricks, extra normal summons, when I already have Tour Guide, already have Gun Wild, already have Terra Top. I already have a bunch of cards that get me started. I really don't need the extra help to keep playing when, like, my deck already can do that somewhat. Now, for the Fiendsmith, uh, Lacrima, Engraver, Tract... And Lurie. So for just a regular Fiendsmith engine, originally I was not a fan of Lacrima as much. Um, but now I see that she's an essential card to this deck because she saves you an extra deck slot if you play her. Basically, if you only played these three, you'd have to play M7 um, to be able to make the uh, Desiree off of just the regular Fiendsmith combo. But if you play Lacrima... Lacrima gives you an extra light fiend in your graveyard to guarantee that you'll always have the th the, the four, right? So one to shuffle back for Engraver, and then the three to shuffle back for Desiree. 
so it just makes the deck a lot easier and now it's like you don't even technically need to play these two unless you hard open engraver so now it's like if you hard open engraver you can just go for searching fiendsmith track go into lurry and then you could uh tribute summon this and then you could start like your caesar play your link play whatever it is that you want to do with your fiendsmiths without using your normal summon so you can make a caesar without using normal summon uh now that this is no longer a part of the combo this is now a good like starter slash extender to open just for the fiendsmith stuff so if you want to make a caesar and then have like engraver under there and then like once you get to like dug charger you just detach the engraver caesar will still have one material if they try to zeus you i think this is a really solid engine and as small of a package as it is has so much recursion thanks to like Desiree and Engraver being just being able to shuffle back stuff and then you know being able to like follow up on the uh, next turn with like being able to summon itself back and and all that kind of stuff it's it's just insane how much you can get done with this engine if you play your cards right and people aren't going to be as on Bistiel's as much anymore because uh Azamina Fire King Snake Eyes is is uh, starting to do pretty well they're going to be on DD Crow more and if you show them that you're on Goblin Biker before you show them the Fiendsmith stuff, they're going to start banishing the Goblin Biker cards. Whereas like once you get to the Fiendsmith stuff, they're going to be like, oh shit, I should have saved it for this. Whereas like it's it's kind of like awesome because both engines can act as hand trap bait for the other one. So if they use all their hand traps on the uh, Goblin Biker stuff, then the Fiendsmith stuff usually goes through pretty fine. Whereas like if they use hand traps on the Fiendsmith stuff, the Goblin Biker stuff goes, goes through pretty fine. And it's like both are kind of scary in their own way. This one leads to like an Omni Gate. This one leads to like three, four, five plus interruptions on the opponent's turn if it goes all the way through. So there's like layers to it. And it's not all in one place. It's in the graveyard. It's in the field. Sometimes it's even in the hand. If you summon Gabonga on the opponent's turn, I can't tell you how many times Boom Mock has become something of a hand trap because I went full Armin Exceed into Gabonga on my opponent's turn, searched this guy, and now, and now all of a sudden they're scared of like, oh shit, well now he has a free detach in hand at, at any point so now i can just swallow a monster at any point so yeah fiendsmith engine is really good for for how small it is it's it's so effective and uh i'm going to be going through a build uh later on on the channel that um utilizes this engine even more um there's an unchained variant that i want to explore but uh for right now this is good enough like like this is enough for the deck and then the last bit of engine uh, full arm exceed and uh angel statue right uh these cards are searchable off of cards that you can link summon or uh, exceed summon so they're part of the engine angel statue is really good because you know what i was talking about with full arm and exceed where you could chain block a like dark ruler or let's say like a, dro a droplet angel statue does the same thing except you don't have to lower your ceiling to do it so you could go so some people i see are playing like la virtue dragon and that's a good budget option, but I think like the better card is the Angel Statue because uh, it could be summoned anytime and it could just negate summons from extra deck. Like there's a lot of stuff that your opponent cannot do under this card and all your stuff on your field. So now time for non-engine. We have triple cross out, one tactics and one called by. Um, cross out is very important, especially that we're on a 50 card deck and you're gonna see how, like, cause the, the, rest, of the, the rest of the deck is just hand traps. Like the rest of this deck, is nothing but hand traps and this is the only non-engine that we're playing i'm only on one talents because we're playing triple thrust in the side deck and uh, originally this was going to be in my side deck as well as just the one of to get off of thrust i wanted to put another card into into my side and i'm like what card can i can i put into the main without hurting the main deck going first or second and i figured talents was it it's a good non-engine card to just have yeah called by is also great uh going first or second and uh i i really just love all these cards i i have no complaints really um they all put in the work i didn't really resolve cross out as much as i thought i would but i still wouldn't take it out you know what i'm saying because when it does resolve it it does its job on top of this deck being able to play around hand traps pretty well this deck really does need sometimes the extra like one or two cards make sure that your cards resolve you know like if you only open like normal summon tour guide you want to make sure the tour guide resolves so that's why you're on cross out plus called by so next we have hand traps and we have not one not three not five not eight not nine not 10 but 13 hand traps and this is what's really making the size of the deck go over 45 because i figured i wanted extra copies of certain cards in my side deck that would do that would do me well fulos is here because cross out into fulos is just too strong and if i happen to draw this card i really won't hate myself if i'm being real i resolved it once against uh snake eye 
as a Mina Fire King, and it did me pretty well. It, it pretty much got me the game, or would have gotten me the game if time wasn't called. Imperm, Ghost Ogre, uh, both of these, I wanted to keep as, as two loves because uh, Imperm is, it's really good when you open Breakout, like you can play around Imperm, but I also want to make sure that like if I open an Imperm, I'm not stuck with like Crossout. Like Crossout cannot interact with the Imperm at all. So I just put two Imperm in there so that cross out can always interact with it ghost ogre i think is a good card to open i don't mind opening it and i don't mind playing it off e-telly it's less here for cross out and more just here because it's good with the engine it's it just works with the engine and it's a good card right now so i figure my, might as well play it right it's good against uh deception good against desiree I'm good against a few things in the format so it's definitely not a bad card to uh play right now ash because ash is like irreplaceable valor and mourner just because if people are on more like fringe hand traps i don't want to like get caught by something that i can't cross out and even like the dominus cards i've even considered putting single copies of the dominus cards in like uh impulse at least uh putting a single impulse in here just because i feel like a lot of people are going to be on that card so maybe i may take out like ghost bell for it but i also want to keep ghost bell in because people are going to start interacting with your graveyard whether it be bestials dd crows whatever it may be I want to have Ghost Bell there because it, it, it's a good defense and it's a good offense. It can stop things like Wanted Poster from searching. It can stop Beansmith Engine. It can stop um, Fire King cards. So I want to make sure that I can like Ghost Bell. Like Ghost Bell has a lot of utility in this format and uh, it being level three. And like that's also half the reason. Like, you know, like Ghost Ogre's level three, Mourner's level three, Ghost Bell's level three. There are just times where you open one of these and you're just like, hmm, I open this in the Psychic Tracker. Those are my only <laughs> monsters in hand or access to monsters in hand. Guess what I'm doing? I'm normal summoning, special summoning level three extender, and then overlaying. That is that is sometimes what you may have to do. And that will happen whether you're playing 40 cards or not. I figure since I'm playing 50, I might as well use the level three hand traps to make that work. At the regionals I was at before, I was using more rank sixes at the time. I was using the bestials as a hand traps because I figured like, hey, if like engraver gets like banished with like DD Crower or something, I can just special summon out a Bistial from my hand, like let's say like Magnemut or like Baldrake, then overlay with that to go into Lars or, or to go into Goblin Crazy Beast. So it's kind of like the same idea, right? Um, it, let's say if like Terra Top gets negated or something like that and I have one of these in my hand, I'm normal summoning this. It, like if I have one of these and nothing else in my hand, I'm normal summoning one of these bitches. That's kind of like the theory. Also Droll did me pretty well um, in, in one match. I hard opened Droll and they had the Fuelos and I was able to draw them to stop them from drawing cards. And I was able, like, they still drew about, like, two or three cards off of Fuelos, but I was able to draw them before I really went into the whole Fiendsmith line and stuff, and I was able to stop them from really making, like, significant plays. Um, or I was able to, to make just enough to stop from, from playing the game on their turn, and they, they lost that game. Through a Fuelos, a, a draw on Fuelos, which makes me want to consider playing more draws in the future right maybe cleaning up some of my ratios maybe taking out the valor because people aren't on valor as much anymore we will see i have to do more testing before i could say any of that for sure now it's time for the extra deck now this is an exceed deck you would think right so how many exceeds are we playing when you look at a goblin biker list you may see like 10 11 12 exceed monsters brother we're only playing like six or seven <laughs> uh we only got the two big gabonga the most important one for the engine Utopic Grey Lancer, he's kind of replaced your uh, Zeus for now, because as your like OTK guy, you don't even need a Shuriking anymore because of him. But we got Exceed Number Fortress, and we got uh, Dark Knight Lancer for the full arm and Exceed stuff, Gossip Shadow, and Hiking Caesar. These are all the Exceed monsters that we are using in this format, simply because Link monsters just do so much more that like this deck is not that good at like having any like one card exceed plays. So if you try to force too many exceed monsters, you're gonna have a lot of times where like you have like very two awkward monsters with each other and they can't really do anything because either they're not the same level, either one's an exceed and one isn't. And there's gonna be a lot of situations like that and you don't wanna stop playing because you rely too hard on exceed monsters. So uh, what I opted for instead is to just play the bare minimum of what's necessary on the exceed monster side and then to kind of make up for that with link monsters, um, which you're going to see in a second. So as you can see, we're no longer on Cicada King either as well. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of times where I don't even feel the need to make Gossip Shadow during my turn. So with the full arm and exceed play, I either go for the second Gabanga or I go for the Gossip Shadow. And oftentimes that's more than enough. 
Caesar, you always make with it, uh, this with the Fiendsmith engine. There are even times where like I have an extra Goblin Bikers Gone Wild on my field and I go for Necroquip and I overlay Gone Wild plus a Necroquip to make uh, Caesar. Because there are times where like I don't even need to use the engraver to make um to make this which is just so much more convenient now um, as long as i have any other extender which is why i was mentioning like the mean merciless in graveyard sometimes that's like the best extender to have because then that allows you to make sequence without that allows you to make desiree plus caesar basically sometimes in certain hands like so so that's why i think starting with tour guide is is like a lot stronger now um and there's like way more like broken plays now i think that like you can do with the fiendsmith engine to play around stuff and like to make your board pretty much like unbreakable so next off we got the link monsters so requiem a sequence to heaven as you can see we took out the mellow melody for the reason i was stating before is that link monsters just do just do it so much better now that we're playing gone wild there's going to be a lot of times that you're going to have an extra monster or two that aren't level three and you don't want to sacrifice potential plays just because you want to make an exceed monster you will get exceed material you'll get all the exceed material you'll need just with like exceed armor fortress alone and then when fortress runs out you overlay to dark knight lancer then just detach fortress as like the last one oftentimes that's going to be all that you really need to make most of your plays so i think moon of the close heaven is a lot better in that regard and then we have like the silo hat right to get us to the statue ip and sp and so essentially i was kind of like going through the combo lines that i made before with the promethean princess and i'm like that's really good but the reason why i decided to go for the silo hat is because i wanted to have a card that i could make that could get me the same amount of interruption as a promethean princess without actually being promethean princess because there's too much conflict with uh princess locking us into fire and all this kind of stuff whereas like if they cleared a desiree princess could become like a conflict for us so i figured uh, still hat rabbit is like a safer card to play that can get us essentially the same thing and you know we play like one more card in main deck to get like a effectively the same board and so ip same idea right like so in case you already have enough to go for sequence and you just want to make like an extra card just in case or if you uh hard open the trap card ip could could do just as well right because because you kind of don't want them to know that you hard open the trap card so you don't want to use, uh, like, you don't want to go solo hat rabbit and not be able to resolve the effect. If anything, I think it will be more worth it. Even if you can't use sequence, just to go, like, um, IP and then just to have, like, one extender on field um, to go into uh, SP Loto Knight. There are even times with IP where it's, like, you summon back Cl uh, Clatter from Graveyard, Clatter summons back Gone Wild, and then Gone Wild can summon one from deck uh, to where it's, like, the two monsters, the two level threes can go into the big Gabanga, and then you can link off the IP and the Gone Wall to go into SP. So that way you still have the, the uh, Gabanga on field to resolve Gone Wall's effect to snatch a card as XE material. And you have the SP Little Knight Banish, and you still have a search off of Gabanga to either get you follow up or to get you the Boom Moth as a potential hand trap. So I think this configuration is a little stronger than relying solely on exceed monsters it's like worst case scenario if this thing gets hit we can always just go back to the mellow melody but i think this is better by like a mile uh, like i don't even think it's like close how much better this is um compared to it's uh compared to the mellow melody in our list so yeah i i figure that this is like a, a really good link package and it's even gotten to the point where I feel like we could even play more Link Monsters. Like, I, I, I've even seen some people on, like, Axis Code. And I think that's actually possible in our list. I think Axis Code is more than possible in Goblin Bikers. Now, with just how many... Mo like, if you just start playtesting this deck with Gone Wild, you'll see how many monsters you're going to have on field. And you're going to be like, holy fuck. It's like too many monsters to manage at some point. Wow. Like, I could probably make, like, an Axis Code, like, right here. And we do need a better going second plan. I was considering uh, Underworld Goddess as a going second card. Um, maybe over like SP Loto Knight. If you can't afford the SP, Underworld Goddess could be a really good uh, option right here. Because like you can still resolve Moon of the Close Heavens effect. Go into the Fiendsmith stuff. And just use something like IP to go into like a uh, Underworld Goddess. In case you can't afford SP here. But uh, Silo Hat shouldn't be that expensive. It's only like 15 bucks for one of these. If it, like if you can't afford SP, I, I I can't imagine you would have like the Fiend's Miss stuff either. So I understand expensive cards are expensive, and like it's hard to play this deck seriously if 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 it has such a like high cost of entry. But I do believe that this is like the best way to use the deck at the moment. Obviously that can change, but uh, I think for now this is uh, the strongest way to use it. Not to say the other ways are bad, 
but I think like I much prefer playing it this way. And uh, fusions, right? Just Fiendsmith Engine stuff. Desiree plus Necro Quip. One funny interaction that uh, I have with this card is that if they Dogmatica Maximus you, because people are going to be on uh, Fire King again, so they, they might they may want to play like Dogmatica Fire King. If you mill these two at the same time, Desiree can shuffle back the sequence. He can send a card they control to the graveyard. If they Maximus on you, you actually have a play for Maximus, which is like... So, lastly, the side deck, right? Uh, you go triple Dark Ruler, Board Breakers, right? Raigeki, Fetter Duster, triple Evenly, triple Tactics, Thrust, and then the single the Droplet. And the reason why I opted for Droplet here is because I just... Kind of like a, the, the theory of like one ofs. So I just want to have like a bunch of different cards that kind of do the same thing. So if like Dark Ruler is enough or I don't open it evenly, I just want to have like one more card that could like potentially help me break down my opponent's board. And I feel like Droplet could be really good at that, especially now that I do have a copy of Fuolos and I am aiming to get more. I think a card like Droplet wouldn't hurt if I have the extra cards in hand. This could be good to just like send a few and not have to worry about things in my opponent's front row for the turn i love the triple tactic stress and i think if you're going to be on over 40 cards it's unfortunate that you may need three of them i know a lot of people are kind of uh on the hopium that this gets reprinted in bonanza so i do hope it does just to make the card cheaper but i think otherwise you know triple evenly as well thrust being able to to access any of these cards or tactics or or a starter is like really well uh tactics into fetter duster got me a win against sky striker and it was like really cool how that uh, went down. I'll talk more about my matchups and stuff in like another video since this one's going to be long enough. But yeah, I figure like this is like the optimal side deck stuff. The Goblin Biker just needs to see board breakers going second. So stuff as many of them as you can into your side deck and just see how that works for you. Another card simply for thrust going first, right? So what I was talking about in my Mulcharmy video. Where it's like, if they will charm you, and you don't have Droll, and you don't have any way to like directly interact with the card, the second best thing you can do is to try to get a card that can skip their turn. And so that's why I play the Thrust into D-Barrier. Whereas like, if I know that they're on Mulcharmy, I may use this combination just so I could potentially skip their turn if they're on a deck that relies on like Fusion or what may have you. Um, even if they're on like Azamina, letting them go into the Deception and activate the, the Hollowed Azamina just to resolve D-Barrier and you know let them waste all their resources i think is is also a good way to go so yeah i don't think it hurts to play d barrier and people are going to be on d barrier for that reason as well so you do want to have the one d barrier that you can cross out uh, i should probably get a, a cr of this actually i i forgot to pick up a cr of d barrier but since everything in that, <laughs> everything else that is possibly that could possibly be cr in my deck is cr so this is the one thing i forgot to get in pcr but it's all right so that is 13 of the 15 cards in my side deck is literally just dedicated board breakers plus the one D barrier. And the very last card, or last two cards in my side deck, one is Perulia. And so I figured if I wanted to play multiple Fugalos, this would be the slot that I would play them in. But I don't have Fugalos at the moment, so I decided to put my Perulia in. And I don't hate it. I actually really like this card. Some people don't like playing this card in main, so I figured it's a, it's a good side option, right? So I figured I might, might as well put it in the side deck. And then lastly, uh, Zeus. And the reason why this is so perfect to put Zeus in the side deck instead of in the main deck is because you almost never make this card going second. So it's like a perfect one-to-one -one swap. Whereas like if I go first, I always want to have this card to go into the angel statue because it's just too good. Whereas like if I'm going second, I would rather see a board breaker than see like one more trap card in my deck, right? So I just side this out and I just put the Zeus in and that makes it easier since I have like 13 board breakers. That gives me some guaranteed cards to take out. I also usually hard take out cross out going second unless I know that they're on D barrier or other things like that. And uh, there's like a few other things where, you know, I, I, I go down on a few ratios depending on like what my opponent's uh, deck is. But ultimately, I think the swapping out of Zeus for Silo Hat has done me pretty well so far. And I think I'm going to keep doing that going forward. I love playing Zeus in the side deck now because ultimately, as I said, you're not going to go for Zeus anymore. You're going to try to go for game with a uh, utopic ray lancer and that has done me this has won me the game like multiple times actually so i really love this card and i love that actually it's on master duel as well <laughs> so it's just a really good like tech card for uh, any deck like goblin biker just using exceed monsters rank threes or rank fours 
and yeah i just think uh it's a really solid deck at the moment uh goblin bikers are just really solid right now they're not going to be like the best like meta deck or like the best deck for the meta but if you know what you're doing i think this could be a really solid deck to like bring to events and stuff and i guess i should start looking into more budget options and and you know uh budget ways to play the deck and other ways to play the deck as i said i was lo also looking into unchained and uh, La Virtue Dragon. Pure build could actually go really well because Dimensional Fissure is going to do so much better this format uh, due to Azamina and Fire King being around. I just think like the, 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 the future of this deck is very hopeful. Because we're a Dia Bellstar lore deck, we're going to get more support in the future. We already saw that new rank six that, uh, it, it's, it's like a different version of, of Crazy Beast that basically does the same thing. But, but for monsters. I, I'm really liking the progress that this deck has has uh, has made with this new support, and I can't wait to see how much more I can do or how much better I can do with this deck. It's a bit more solid in its uh, game plan and its foundation. So uh, if you guys enjoyed deck profile, leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave any comments. If you guys have any questions, you know, either hit me up or, you know, if you want to join the Discord server in the link below. I, I am on there, so uh, if, if you guys want to get in contact with me directly, ask me any like questions like that. Also on Twitter, uh, one user has reached out to me on Twitter asking about Goblin Bikers. So um, if you aren't too sure, like if, if you if you need more in depth information, you know you guys know where to reach me. It's in the description below. This has been your boy Nistro. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.